I'm not seeing anything but a white screen, Ingrid. Mayor Cunningham, we're live. I could stop sharing the screen now, but I'll, I'll, I'll need to share it at a later time. Okay, good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of uh, Thursday, January 7th, 2021, at uh, 7.45 p.m. We were going to start with a workshop at 7.30, but our, our special earlier meeting went over and we will be uh, doing the City Council workshop at the end of this meeting. Um, if, uh, Ingrid, would you go ahead with the disclaimer? Thanks. This meeting is compliant with Governor's Executive Order N-29-20 issued on March 17th, 2020, allowing for deviation of teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide the safest environment for staff, council members, and the public while allowing for public participation. The public may address the council using exclusively remote public comment options. The council may take action on any item listed in the agenda. Members of the public may view the city council meeting by logging into the Zoom meeting listed below. City council meetings can also be viewed live and or on demand via the city's YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Brisbane CA or on Comcast channel 27. Archived videos can be replayed on the city's website, brisbaneca.org forward slash meetings. The city council meeting will be an exclusively virtual meeting. The city council agenda materials may be viewed online at www.brisbaneca.org at least 24 hours prior to a special meeting and at least 72 hours prior to a regular meeting. Meeting participants are encouraged to submit public comments in writing in advance of the meeting. Aside from commenting while in the Zoom meeting, the following email and text line will also be monitored during the meeting and public comments received will be read into the record during oral communications one and two or during an item. Email ipadia at brisbaneca.org, text 628-219-2922. Join the Zoom meeting at zoom.us with a meeting ID 918-615-2922. And the passcode is 123456. <clears throat> we'll call the number at 1669-900-9128. If you need special assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact the city clerk at 415-508-2113. Thank you. Welcome to the City Council meeting of January 7th, 2021. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm calling this meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the, the Republic. Republic. For which is one nation, one nation under, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. I got my video back. Um, item two, roll call, please. City clerk, please call. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Lenz. Here. Council Member Mackin. Here. Council Member O'Connell. Here. And Mayor. Cunningham. Sure. Thank you. Uh, item three, adoption of the agenda. Um, I'd, I'd like to say a few words before we move forward this evening. Ma um, Mayor Cunningham, I'm yeah. sorry. When your video went, uh, Council Member O'Connell, were you trying to get the mayor's attention? I was trying to get the city clerk's attention because the number shown on the screen for the meeting ID was not the number she read. So I wanted, to make sure, I wanted to make sure the public had the correct, if they were just listening to the audio, they had the correct meeting ID. I'm not sure which is the correct one, but. Thank you, that was for our workshop. I'll amend that for this council meeting. Thank you. Can, 
but can they get the right number? We should read it aloud correctly. Thank you. Ingrid, could you reread the number, please? Can people see my screen? Yes. Yes. The correct number is 918-6154-8157. Again, 918-6154-8157. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item three, again, um, before we move on to the adoption of the agenda, I just want to make a comment and then ask our city council if they would like to make additional comments regarding the events that occurred in our capital last night. Um, if everybody is feeling okay. as though we've been assaulted, we have. And, you know, this is probably one of the most diabolical things that I've seen in my life. Um, and we need to move forward from it. But I know a lot of people are feeling very confused, like we did after 9-11, and we should feel that way. That's just the way things are. And I just want to read something that I wrote earlier this morning when I was contemplating how I was feeling. And, and I'm sure you're all feeling very confused and disgusted, dismayed, or many other emotions, and they're all normal. And, and that's just what happened yesterday it was not right. It was not okay in any way, shape or form. And how we're going to heal from this, I really don't know, but we will. And so I would like us to reflect on the events of January 6th at our capital and vow to do everything in our collective power to assure that all decisions and disagreements be handled honorably and with calm resolve moving forward in our, in our country. What happened at our Capitol yesterday was unthinkable and will be branded by many unsavory names as it should. Those responsible should be punished to the letter of the law. And I know as of this evening, there have been about 80 arrests and I hope there are many, many more. We are incredibly fortunate to live in our community, a community that values individuality and the, the can-do spirit of togetherness and resolve our differences in an appropriate and lawful manner. I feel for everybody on our city council. I feel for everybody in our community. I feel for all of our staff. We have been through a horrendous last 12 months, but we're gonna come through strong and we're gonna work together. And I'm really sorry for what happened yesterday. And we certainly did not need this on top of a pandemic. And it is very hurtful to every single person. Would anybody else on the, the council like to add to my comments, please? Colleen. I would like, Jerry, I would, I would like to say that um, what, was, what happened at our Capitol was horrific and that um, it's amazing to see that the people who instigated are not stepping forward or taking responsibility. And I'll leave it at that, but thank you for your words. Colleen. Um, I would just say, I think it's a really good reminder that democracy is something that can vaporize instantly. And that the way to preserve it is you have to start at ground floor, which is here in our community. If we're going to preserve democracy, every small town and city across America has to reinforce it because we can lose it. And I'm not taking it for granted ever again. I, I think we need to keep that in the front of our minds all year long. Thank you, Colleen. Anybody else? I will, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you so much for your, your comments and, and putting this out there for us to talk about. Um, yeah, it was difficult to watch the, the scene unfold yesterday afternoon. And it, it, it yeah, I mean, it was, there was just, there's just no words to describe it. But, you know, um, you know, we had, we had an African-American elected 
the Senate from the South, right? The first time that's ever happened. And um, even though it was awful that someone had passed away and that our, our um, that the, the people's house was, um, you know, disrespected in, in the way that it was, it also exposed, I think, in, in, a, in, a, in a sharp and very clear way of the, um, you know, the abuse and, um, and disrespect that, that Donald Trump has for democracy. And it was put on display yesterday. And, and you know, more than 70 people voted for him. And I, I think in some ways there needed to be some kind of wake up call to a large, you know, a large portion of the population that, you know, we, when we come together and we work together, we solve the issues that we face. It's not about violence. It's not about being a bully. It, it, it's about working together and understanding each other's differences. And um, I, I just hope that, that people that, you know, had, had supported Donald Trump, you know, understand that, you know, our democracy needs to be about, you know, understanding all sides, not, not going towards the side of anger and fear, which these people displayed. And, um, but, you know, I think we have to be optimistic and, and hope for the future. And, and even though we're in this pandemic, like you said, Madam Mayor, we're going to get through it and we and we will be better. So, um, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you, Cliff. Madison, do you have something you want to say? Sure. Um, you know, when I, when I reflect on yesterday, I, I think that this was something that I expected and maybe not quite in this fashion, but I think that, you know, this is something that has been brewing for a long time. And, um, you know, we say, oh, we're so lucky to live in a place that's not like that. But I think we have to acknowledge that people with ideologies like that, they live everywhere. They live in every community. And to say, oh, I'm so happy we don't live in a place like that. To me, I think we need to stare at this issue head on. We need to confront it and we need to own the fact that these issues exist everywhere. And to me, yesterday was not just a threat to our democracy, an assault on our constitution and our government, but yesterday should have illuminated for so many people how race and the way that we treat people of color is at the crux of what happened yesterday. For the first time in our country's history, the Confederate flag entered our capital. That is a disgrace. There were Nazi symbols in our capital yesterday. So what happened is not just about a threat to our democracy. What happened is, should be a conversation that we're having about race in this country and the way that we treat our black brothers and sisters, the way that we treat our Jewish brothers and sisters, the way that we treat indigenous communities and people of color I think the easy thing is to say, this is a threat in our democracy and it was, but it should illuminate the problems that we have so pervasive in, in our communities, how white supremacy is something that so often is easy to turn a blind eye to because there's people that we respect in our communities, but they identify this way. And so for me, you know, I'm so thankful that yesterday our, our government resumed and we, we confirmed Joe Biden, but there's so much work that has to be done. And it has to be done in places like this. It has to be done in small communities. We can't look to our government and say, okay, you know, you guys need to, you guys need to fix this. You guys need to help 
make our society a more just place. We have such a privilege to be in a position of power. And that might be relatively small power, you know, considering how many other elected positions there are, but we each have a level of influence and a level of power and we make decisions that can impact Brisbane. And while yes, I think Brisbane is such an amazing place to live. And I think that, you know, we have so many people of different diverse backgrounds and so much open minds. In the last year I have received, so I've received letters. I have seen posts on Facebook that have shown me that there are people that live in Brisbane that may have thought that what happened yesterday was not a problem. And it takes courage from everyone here to say that is not what we are going to allow. That is not the message that we, we're not gonna succumb to that. We're not gonna be bullied by that. And I didn't, I didn't want to say that much right now. But I just feel like, you know, I can't be silent about this anymore. So, you know, I want to commit. And this is something that we have discussed, but I want to reiterate, I have a commit, I am making a commitment today to say that I would like to evaluate all the ways in which as myself, as a council member, and I hope the rest of you will join me, how we can put things in place and how we can ensure that in Brisbane, we are working on making our city more welcoming, whether that's, you know, on commissions and committees, how we can attract, you know, people from diverse backgrounds to come and work for the city. What can we do to improve our police department? We have great police officers, but there's always work to be done. I hope we never see that again. But if we don't get it together as a nation, this is not the last time we will see something like that. So I hope it's a wake up call to everybody to say, you know what? I'm gonna commit to do the work with the people in my family, with my friends, with the people at my job. I'm gonna make a commitment to help move this country in the right direction. I'm gonna do everything within my power to make sure that we don't allow this type of behavior to exist and that we have those hard conversations with those people in our lives that we know may be subscribing to that thought process. So that's it for me. That's how I feel about it. Thank you. Anybody wanna say anything else before we move forward? Okay. good. Thank you, everybody. I just thought it was uh, the appropriate way for us to start our evening. Um, I realized that um, I, my first meeting as the mayor, and I had forgotten to ask for a report out from closed session. So let's backtrack one step before we move forward. Man, You're doing great. Thank doing you. Doing great, Madam Mayor. Uh, the report out's brief as usual. The council uh, took uh, input on a personnel matter and uh, gave direction to the uh, city manager on another matter involving the claim. Thank you. Moving on to item four, oral communications number one. Is there a member of the public wishing to speak on- Madam Mayor? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I believe you wanted to close and, and adjourn the meeting. That's later, that's at the close. Oh, in terms of the adoption of the agenda that needs to um, also be approved? as amended. Oh, I see. Apologies. We'll keep going. So adoption of the agenda. Um, can we adjourn? Uh, is there a first and a second to adopt the meeting agenda as amended? City roll call, please. How is it amended? It's being requested to adjourn the meeting um, in memory of Marie Bird. I'll make the motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. <laughs> Colleen got that one. It doesn't matter. All right. 
Council member, I'll do the roll, go ahead and um, do the roll call. Council member Davis. Hear me? Aye. Sorry. Council member Lentz. Aye. Council member Mackin. Aye. Council member O'Connell. Aye. And Mayor Cunningham. Aye. Okay, now item four, we're moving on to oral communications number one. Ingrid, is there any member of the public wishing to speak on items that are not on the agenda? There are no members of the public wishing to make public comment and I have received no text or written correspondence at this time. Thank you. So now we move on to the consent calendar. Item A, approve the minutes of the city council closed session meeting of December 10, 2020. Any changes, comments? I'd make a motion to approve item A through F. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Council member Davis? Aye. Council member Lentz? Aye. Council member Mackin? Aye. Council member O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Cunningham? Aye. Item B, approve the minutes of the Joint City Council and Housing Authority meeting of December 10th, 2020. Any comments? I think we approved all those items. Oh, oh, oh. F. thank you, Terry. Uh, okay, item six, staff reports. Uh, G, city managers report on upcoming, upcoming activities. I can't even speak tonight, I'm sorry. What, okay. Doing great, Karen. <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll go through a few items and then um, after that, I'll talk briefly about the Sierra Point uh, park planning process. So um, the first item is just a reminder to um, everyone in the community. As we all know, we're going through a particularly uh, difficult time in terms of the, uh, the virus um, to uh, the mask up, quarantine, test, isolate. Um, if you seem to, if you have symptoms or problems, We are going to be having a uh, COVID-19 test um, on this Monday, January 11th, uh, upcoming Monday, January 11th from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Brisbane uh, Pool. Uh, this is the second time we've done this. Um, you can go on to our website and get uh, signed up for this. Uh, there's different slots, um, time slots, so that you um, hopefully don't have to wait in line very long uh, when you get there. Um, and as of now, right now, I think we still have 60 slots uh, available, but uh, based on the last time we did this, those will go quickly. Um, next Wednesday uh, at 11.30 a.m., uh, the San Mateo County Health Department is going to be doing a webinar um, on the COVID-19 vaccination, what you need to know. Uh, so if you have any questions about that or just want to get some general information um, that will be available uh, to um, the general public to, um, to listen in on. Uh, a reminder that the next uh, the workshop, workshop number two for the Crocker Trail Master Plan um, will be on Tuesday, January 19th at 6.30 p.m. Um, and we will have a, um, a Zoom, I guess, I'm assuming we have a Zoom um, link for people to uh, sign up and to uh, participate in that. And then a, a reminder to uh, everyone in the community that uh, tomorrow at uh, five o'clock is the deadline for serving on a commission or committee of the city. Um, you can contact the uh, city clerk um, and uh, she will be available to take applications up until 5 p.m. tomorrow. Um, also that there's an extended comment periods for the draft remedial action plans for OU2 um, will be on January 31st. Both of these have been extended. 
Um, and on OU San Mateo portion, which is under the purview of DTSD, and that will end on uh, February uh, 15th. Um, we have listed here the uh, staff people from uh, the Water Board and from uh, Department of Toxics and Substance Control that you can contact uh, to uh, participate in those meetings or to, to get your uh, comments in, I should say. And then finally, um, just an update of uh, the uh, council uh, subcommittee, ad hoc subcommittee that has been working on the Sierra Point Park planning did meet um, in December. As you recall, in um, the month of November, you approved the uh, money for the public works director to do some improvements, uh, initial improvements in the what we call the parcel R um, out in the, uh, the face of the, uh, the marina. Um, that work has been uh, accomplished. Um, so our next step is to start to pursue the uh, hiring of a park planning consultant to, uh, to work with us. Um, although we don't want to um, get heavy into the park planning until we can actually have public meetings, uh, which means that that will probably uh, not take place until uh, the fall of 2021. But in the meantime, we do know we have an applicant that wants to um, have a park project within their uh, hotel site. Um, and so we uh, would like to get the, the uh, consultant on sooner than later uh, to start working with us on that. And then also on the process, we've identified a number of um, potential stakeholders. Um, we really want this to be a very inclusive uh, process. Um, I think uh, there was a lot of uh, um, support behind the way we ultimately did the design, final design um, for the uh, uh, new Brisbane library. I'd like to kind of emulate that process. Uh, we've identified um, a, different, a lot of different groups, uh, the Yacht Club, the boaters, business interest at Sierra Point, Chamber of Commerce, members of the Parks and Recreation Commission, members of the Open Space and Ecology Commission, uh, representatives from the users of the Fisherman's Pier, the hotel operators, and then just general citizens of Brisbane who might be interested. So uh, we'll be reaching out to uh, get a number of people involved when we actually get to the park planning uh, process. Um, just a reminder that we do have a um, significant amount of money uh, that has come in for this potential uh, uh, park planning process. Uh, 1.8 million, we've got another, I think, quarter million that's gonna be coming in from the Genesis Biotech Project. So all told, we'll have over a couple million dollars. Um, we've kind of expanded our thought process and our, <clears throat> I guess, vision for the park. Um, I think historically, we've just kind of thought of the old parcel R, SART, uh, parcel R site, um, but now we're kind of thinking of the entire Sierra Point. As you know, we have recreational facilities out there already in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the path that goes around the, the point that people use for walking, running, bike, biking. Uh, we have the Fisherman's Pier uh, as well as the, uh, the park site itself. So um, that's just an update one to keep the council as a whole um, kind of informed and the public informed on what we're, we're doing. And um, we <clears throat> anticipate the next step will be to um, go through the um, uh, an RFP process for selecting a, a, a park planning consultant um, and then making a recommendation that will ultimately come back to the full council for consideration. Uh, if there's any questions on that or any of the other items, I can entertain that. Other than that, um, that's my report for tonight. Any questions for Clay? You know, Matt, Madam Mayor? Sure. Um, so, I mean, we all think like the, the library is just like that shiny example of the community coming together and, and creating a, a wonderful public space. And um, it is, and that process was fantastic. The way that, that, that we did, um, you know, set that, that project in motion. Um, I, I did get a couple of uh, in, uh, phone calls from some park and rec commissioners who, um, you know, since this is a, is going to be a park, right? You know, or a large portion of it. Um, they, they were wondering if, um, they could be included in the process a little bit earlier, like perhaps a, a two members of, uh, park and rec working with, uh, council member O'Connell and myself in that process of, of vetting, 
um, a consultant that would be eventually uh, that we would eventually take to the council for um, uh, consideration. And so I just wanted to put that out to out there to the other council members. Um, if you thought that was a good idea to have two members of Park and Rec uh, working with uh, Council Member O'Connell and myself in that process. Terry? I would have no objection to increased um, assistance from the Park and Rec Department. Um, is that something we would need to get their buy-in as a committee first, or, or would we, and can we even set that up to make an ad hoc park committee at this point? I'm sort of asking staff that. I think that's the appropriate approach, um, be because uh, it's just a focused one-time sort of, um, Effort, so I think it would qualify as an ad hoc committee, and uh, I think the, the ask would be to the Parks and Recreation Commission to select uh, two members to serve as an ad hoc committee to work with the council ad hoc committee on selection of a consultant. And would that be something that open space and ecology may also want to be in on the vetting? Or are we spreading our net too wide? Um, no, I mean, I, I you know, it, we obviously. Your, the more people we add, the I guess the more uh, a little more complex it gets. But you know, I mean, if you're going to have one committee, maybe it makes sense to have both committees. That, that's really a council call. I mean, and what, what, whatever way you want to do that, we can we can make it work. I think that I think that on you know many of these things that um, park and rack, of course, you know, it's it's looking at design of a new park, or at least this portion would be. Um, selecting a consultant to work with on this. And I think that many times open space and ecology is sort of brought in after the fact and, and it is open space and it is, you know, something that has to do with them. So if we were to bring in members from Park and Rec, I think it might be good to also bring in someone from, <clears throat> whether that's one or two people, um, from each group, and I'm saying one or two, um, I think that might be a good balance that we get for, you know, a variety of uses. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that would be an <laughs> excellent idea. Yeah, the only reason I brought up Park and Rec is they had reached out to me. So, um, but I think we should um, reach out to, to the Open Space and Ecology Committee and see if um, they would be interested in, in participating in that um, consultant vetting process. So, yeah. Colleen? If you're going to include open space and parks and rec, I hate to make it muddy, <laughs> but you should be inviting complete streets because they're about circulation and pedestrian areas. Maybe one, one from each. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Yeah, no, I, I think that all of those things are part of it and, and looking at, you know, what kind of parking is going to be needed for those areas once it gets more built up. Right now we've got a plethora of parking, but that is not necessarily going to remain. Um, and I think that you know, really starting the process later in the year once we see what is going to be available on the phase one portion as far as parking and circulation and access along with the new HCP partners um, site. Once that fencing comes down and it feels more integrated into the space, I think that's a good, a good idea to include circulation and complete streets. Okay. So, so for the management of this, we'll, we'll, we'll reach out to each of those committees and ask them to select, to, um, select one member to... I think that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, Madison, do you have any comments? No? Okay. Okay, I guess that's direction, Clay. <laughs> is, is that all we need there? 
Yeah, that works. Thank you. Okay, okay good. Okay, so um, that that looks really interesting. You know, you know, it's really um, one of the places that I've been walking in this shutdown is out at the marina and sort of knowing what's what's coming down and having these little visions of things that are possible is kind of a really beautiful thing to to think about for the future. So. Good luck with that. Okay, so um, moving on to item seven, mayor and council matters. Um, not sure that we're gonna have any, but uh, do we have any countywide assignments and subcommittee reports right now? I well, think. you and I, Karen, met um, at, for example, the Bayland subcommittee. Right, go ahead. And just, yeah, okay, so, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, Karen and I, you just, you know, working with staff, um, you know, trying to identify some of the key uh, areas of, um, of, of, of the project that, um, that we feel are important to, to the health and well-being of, of, of our city. Um, you know, things that were in the sustainability framework um, that are now part of our, our general plan. Uh, and, you know, looking at things like transportation, um, you know, open space, um, recreation. And so, um, yeah, you know, I just put together a little list of, of, of some of the things that we had talked about. Um, but, you know, um, you, you know, it'd be great to, you know, to really get that, that, that feedback from, from everybody. Um, because, you know, ultimately, and, you know, this is a, um, you know, a project that all of us are going to have to make some serious decisions on. And, and I know that all of us have things that are really important to us that we'd like to see happen. So, um, yeah, so just, yeah, I'm just kind of putting that out there, you know, to, you, you know, even though Karen and I are, are on this, this subcommittee, um, you know, it is really important to hear from, from all of you too. I One thing... One thing that I, uh, that, um, you know, on the Baylands, I think it's really important once we get an initial plan submitted by the developer on what their vision is, um, I think it'd be a good item to agendize for us to look at that and discuss that holistically and try to work in you know, or make comments and suggestions on what individual council members and public um, think about the initial plan. It's hard for me to vision until I know what they really have in mind. And so um, I think we need to wait till the process goes a little further before agendizing it, but I think it'd be a good agenda item for a future meeting. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Adam. Or... Anybody else on the city council want to weigh in on this? Because I, I do have a question for Clay on this before. Just for me personally, I mean, I think like, you know, I totally respect how Cliff, you know, wrote up all of his things that he, you know, would like to see happen in the Baylands. And then that was sent to Clay and then Clay sent that to the council. But I just feel like we owe it to the public. I mean, if each of us are doing that and then sending it to Clay and Clay sending it to the council, I just feel like I am happy to talk about what my vision is for the balance, but I want the public to be in the room and I want them to be part of that conversation. And I want them to be able to weigh in as well. And I would just feel uncomfortable with all of the council knowing my perspectives before the public does. And so I just would feel uncomfortable writing that up and sending that out, even though it's totally within our purview. And that is something that is, you know, absolutely okay for either of us to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, just because I feel like there's so much, um, you know, where we're still trying to build trust with the community and there's a lot of people in town who we want to engage in this process. So I think have felt like there's been stuff that we've talked about behind closed doors and we, you know, obviously had to have so many closed sessions because this was such, you know, uh, we were going <laughs> through potential litigation and all sorts of things that I want everything going forward, you know, for me 
to be as much a part of a public conversation as possible. Right. Colleen, do you have any comments? Because I have a comment for Clay if you're if we're done. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, I think that knowing some of the discussions that have taken place on the subcommittee, it really would be helpful. I like the idea of reports coming to the council because it is a public forum, not just when a finalized plan is laid on the table, but even before that, because um, from the nature of the subcommittee, there's a lot of input done by the council members and the two planning commissioners that sit on that. And the public and the rest of the council may not be aware of that. And before um, BDI finalizes their plan, I think it's good to air some of the things that are being considered. So that if as a community or a council, we wanna say, mm, not so sure about that. We have those discussions before they put the final on the table. Thank it you. was under the assumption that before they put a final on the table, they were going to be bringing forward something to the council level um, for us to review. And I'm sure we'll need to look into um, the financial and the feasibility and all those other things. Um, so I don't think that we should wait until their final plan is necessarily submitted, but certainly something that has an entire vision for the Baylands, not just piecemeal. But Terry, just to clarify, um, sometimes the, the things being discussed are, what I'm talking about is not even just a rough overall, but just where they're talking about roads. And those are items, some of those are interesting and they've been changed and they're still being discussed. So those are things that could come back, I, I think for a discussion, just so everyone knows what's going on. Clay, can you jump in here and, and give us a 20,000 feet overview of what things look like right now and what we were expecting this month that's not happening and what that looks like. And, and maybe given the interest of the entire city council that we have more workshops together because I think everybody is correct. It's like, I, I don't think we should all be, you know, those of us on the subcommittee being the only ones putting forward their vision of what they see. I think, I think this needs to be a much more collective overview. And, you know, things are, are going to be very different this year. We know that. We don't know um, whether there's a timeline that is going to be adhered to for the things that we request from BDI or, you know, then they're not putting forward this month what we had requested. It's going to be next month. Is that going to be March or April or May, can, can you kind of just step in and unmuddy these waters a little bit, please? Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, <laughs> just put I'll, you on the spot. Yeah, so um, what, what we had, uh, the subcommittee had met with them back, I believe in November and talked about having um, monthly meetings. Uh, we didn't do one obviously in December. And the idea was that, you know, they would bring forward kind of where they're at with the project and any specific issues that uh, they um, are uh, wanted to discuss in terms of the, um, you know, the ultimate, you know, development plan. Um, what we asked them to do was to put together a uh, three-dimensional design of the, the project so that we kind of understood how the project kind of worked um, in terms of roads and, um, and uh, you know, everything from open space to the, the ground house to, you know, how the housing is going to look, um, you know, what kinds of, uh, of uh, heights that they were looking at so that we had kind of a, a, a much better sense of the land use of it. Um, they um, are um, more than willing to do that, but they need a little bit of extra time. So they're talking about not coming back until um, uh, February we were also going to talk um, to them at that point about, you know, what 
not that not that we're going to hold anybody to an absolute schedule, but at least get some sense of what the, you know we think the timing of things are going to be. Um, so those are the two items that I think we're going to come forward to the subcommittee in uh, in uh, February. Um, you know, th this is kind of a, a, a process that uh, we uh, uh, as a city and, and you as the council can inform in whatever way, you know, you feel best and f feel more comfortable with. And I was going to hope to use the January subcommittee meeting since we're not going to meet with the developer to kind of talk about process and, you know, when do we get the council back into um, discussion um, and um, get the council as a whole being able to look at certain things. So uh, this conversation tonight has been helpful um, and I think we can have a discussion and come back maybe to the council in uh, in early February and say, okay, here's kind of, you know, some ideas in terms of just process. Um, and, you know, I think what I'm hearing is that you want to see something from the developer, but you, you don't want it to be fully baked. Um, you want to be able to kind of be able to um, have an opportunity to input with them. Um, there are a number of issues. I think um, that I think uh, Councilmember Lenz for putting together his his thought piece because I think the the the, the subject matters whether you agreed with all the the specifics in there or you know particular policy positions the subject matters are really I think relevant to what uh, are the main issues that we're going to be dealing with as we go through uh, through this process. So um, it may be a, a workshop format where. Uh, they come forward with kind of a design of this and then maybe there's like, you know, um, maybe a couple issues in a, in a workshop that we want to drill down on uh, a little bit uh, more and get uh, some thoughts and some input on uh, that, you know, for certainly, you know, the housing type, I think would probably be uh, one of those things. Um, how we're ultimately going to define net neutral energy. Uh, use and we do have a consultant that uh, we've been using for a long time that we're trying to bring in uh, again re-engage with to kind of help guide that conversation uh, so there are a number I think really uh, meaty issues and I, I could see uh, any one issue taking the entire you know couple hours of a workshop um, so I think it, you know we're going to need to have um, you know dedicated time I think as we go through this process my guess right now <clears throat> and it's really it's it's much more of a guess than anything else um, is that it will be at least mid-year before an actual application comes in, and it may be later in the year. Um, but I do expect them to have an application sometime in cal uh, calendar uh, 2021. Um, that uh, would, and the, the key to the uh, application and you know the project description is that will kick off the environmental review and actually start the you know the time frame towards moving to. Um, Planning Commission, ultimately City Council, and the negotiation of the development agreement. Um, but you know the exact timing of that. You know, I, I don't know. Like, would it be of any uh, benefit to have a, a a workshop of any description before the application comes in? Since yeah, I, I think that's what we're talking about. A lot things. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think, yeah. For, frankly, if, if they bring in a a a, a decent a uh, 3D um, model in February. I mean, to me, you know, we maybe we schedule something in late February or March with the full council and say, okay, here's here's what the land use design looks like, you know, because I think once we have that, you can start get a feel for this. I mean, you know, right. some of this is policy issues and it gets very wonkish and some of it's just kind of feel, you know, what does it look like? You know, what, what is, how's it gonna lay out? Um, and it's much more visual. So I think, I think, you know, hopefully, I, I would think, you know, by late February or, or, or March, we might be able to do that. Um, part of that's, you know, when they bring it forward, do we say that looks like something that's interesting to talk about, or you know, <laughs> you guys got need more, you know, do do more work here. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll play that a little bit by ear. But, um, you know, I, I what I'm hearing tonight is kind of an iterative process the council wants and wants to get its hands on this. And uh, I think I've had a conversation with one or two of you about that, you know, a lot of times you have subcommittees that really do deep dives into subject matters. And then when it comes back to the full council, those two council members help guide the conversation. Well, this is a, this is an issue that I think that, you know, uh, you're not going to have just two council members doing the deep dive and, you know, bringing it back to council. You're all going to do a deep dive. Um, so it's, I think, important that we do 
a process that allows um, that full airing out of issues um, as we move forward through through the process. Yeah, I, I know when we were we were talking initially way back when, and we we had the, the the little pieces that we were moving around that board. It was very helpful to everybody to sort of say, well, here's what a four story building looks like here. Here's what this looks like, and and I think that was very helpful to to all of us. Um, Colleen, you, you weren't part of that process, but, you know, moving these pieces around like like Legos on a board and basically, you know, here's a six-story building, here's a four-story building, moving them from here to here to here, what does that look like? This was kind of the same kind of thought process that we were asking from the developer. So, you know, we could visualize what something might look like. I mean, it's all very well and good to say, you know, right here there's going to be a six-story building and here there's going to be four, but unless you see it, with some kind of context, it really wasn't making sense. That's hence the request that we made of, of BDI, so. Yeah, and you know, and also if I just, you know, can add on to that, you know, like Madison, you know, in, in, in you know, just talking about the events of yesterday and like, you know, what's your passion? What do you care about? And and so, um, as Clay has said, I mean, this this has gotta be from all of us, we, you know, there's there's so much, going on with this site. And so, you know, as a subcommittee, you know, it, I mean, yeah, in the traditional sense, like Clay said, yeah, you, you, you know, the subcommittee works with staff and then we give a recommendation, but that, that can't be for this, you know, project, no way, right? <laughs> it, and right. So, yeah, right. So, I mean, like, if you really care about affordable housing, right, if you really care about you know, like uh, just like how people live, you know, or, or you know, any of us, right? You know, just, just if it's transportation, if it's, you know, like the connection to the mountain, right? You know, really we need to, you know, provide that input, give it to UPC or BDI and, and make sure that when they do give us something, it's, it's including the things that, that are important to us that we also hear from, from our constituents too, because they've already contributed a lot already. I think that forum is really like a workshop then. I mean, to yeah, it, is. it is. You know, and just, I just want to say for people who haven't been keeping up that might be listening to this going, what on earth is BDI? Brisbane Development Inc. is the new name for UPC, just so everybody knows. Baylands Development Inc. Yeah. Okay, any more comments on this? Looks like none. Looks like a workshop coming up, folks. Yay. Okay, any other um, subcommittees? Any comments relative to that? No. A lot of holidays? I didn't think so. Um, okay. Next, we have Mayor and Council Matters. Any reports? Here we go, Council Schedule. So here's our council schedule. And the next meeting is January the 21st. Um, there's the meeting schedule. Um, we need to schedule goal setting workshop and schedule applicant interviews for city commissions and committees. Yeah, I was proposing this to do the goal setting workshop in lieu of an actual council meeting. Okay. Uh, we would do that on uh, February 4th. Okay. Good. Uh, do we have any written communications? Well, we, we need uh, we need your um, we need oh, a date yeah. for the uh, interview. Yes. Uh, oh, I want to provide an update on the city commission and committee applications that we've received so far. It it seems like um, we will need to at least interview at least twenty one applicants. This will take about four hours if we like take about 10 minutes per applicant. Um, and I would like to propose in lieu of the city council meeting of the 21st, January 21st to hold the interviews then. Um, and if you need more than one day, there, uh, the 19th would also be available. I Which think that's a, a lot. That's a really long time, um, and to, especially because there's going to be discussion. 
but that's, you know, I'm happy to listen to the rest of the council and what they think, but um, I would just request that the art interviews be scheduled first since I can't be a part of those. Anyway, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because it's on Zoom, so I can just turn off my meeting. So I guess it doesn't really matter when those are scheduled. I was just thinking about back when we were doing them in person, that way we had them first so that we didn't have to sit there. I didn't have to sit there since I can't be part of those interviews. But um, yeah, disregard that. Never mind. Hmm. I think it might be nice to schedule them on the 19th and the 21st. That could give some flexibility to the people interviewing and also give us um, maybe try to do a little more than half on the 19th and then the 21st finish off the interviews and also do our discussion and, and appointments. Sounds good to me, Terry. Now the 19th is the Crocker Park Trail meeting. Oh, so yeah. um, yeah. there could be some conflict there. Okay, that's true. Um, we can do the following Tuesday, which is the which is the twenty sixth. Okay, that works. That works for, for me. me. Works for me too. And I'm happy to say that I am now retired from my day job. So starting a little earlier does not bother me. <laughs> Yay, good for you, Terry. Congrats. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we, should we start? I could start with the commissions on the 21st, starting at, um, would you like to start as early as six? Sounds good to me. Whatever works for anybody else. Six o'clock is a good time. Yep. And then we could do the, tw on the 26th, um, we could do the committees. Same time, 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Yeah, that's good. All right, you know, send out an uh, email reminder, uh, uh, Ingrid. Yes, we'll do. Calendar invite. Thank you. Okay, then with the written correspondence. Received, sorry, Ingrid. We received written correspondence from Wayne Martin from San Jose regarding the 2018 RIPA traffic stop data review and analysis, the Brisbane School District on uh, December 17th about reorganization, the Jefferson Elementary School District on the 17th about their reorganization, Carl Lamb about his resignation from OSEC, Walter Leal about his invitation to a UC COVID-19 symposium, and Dana Dilworth regarding conservation egress. I don't know if any of you uh, checked out that that link that Dana sent. That was a really cool uh, video of that uh, that that wildlife bridge over I-80 um, just, just north of Salt Lake City. Pretty cool. Okay, are, are we done there? Yes. Ingrid? Yes, oh. we're done, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sorry. Okay, so moving on to oral communications number two. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a public comment? I have not received any text or written correspondence, Madam Mayor, but there is one member um, of the public that's in the meeting. If they'd like to make oral comment, they can unmute now. Congratulations on your retirement, Terry. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Looking forward to working with you guys in this coming year, that's all. Shh. Any any other people wishing to speak, Ingrid? There are none, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
I would like to adjourn the meeting um, in memory of Marie Louise Bird, who was a young mom here in Brisbane who passed away on December 22nd. She leaves behind a 14 year old daughter, Giselle, and her husband, James. And for the members of the public who were wanting to know about our workshop, we will be adjourning into the workshop after the end of this meeting and adjourning to the city council meeting of general January 22nd, which will not be a, a regular city council meeting. It will be the interview process for the, the new committees and commissions. You mean the 21st, right? 21st, 21st, I'm sorry, did, did I not? And then can the we take, can we take a uh, two or three minute break before we uh, go into our subcommittee meeting? But we're going to stay on this Zoom. Yeah. Um, yes. We have to go back to our original link, which was the closed session workshop Zoom link. So I have to go ahead and end this meeting. Okay. Go back to that original noticed link. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Careful. Thank you. Thank you.